Hi guys, welcome to another magic tutorial and performance. This one involves two packs of cards. You invite a spectator or even a couple of spectators up to help you. And what you do is you give a pack of cards to someone to hold and they hold those tightly throughout the entire routine. You then come to the other pack and you say to a spectator, can you remove the cards? They remove the cards. Now, I don't have anyone here to help me, so we'll imagine we've got an invisible friend. Now, with the cards, you can show them. They are just a regular pack of cards and they can examine those as much as they like. You can shuffle the cards, cut the cards, whatever. You then ask the spectator if they can cut the cards in half, which they do. They have two halves. You ask them to grab one of those halves of cards. Now let's say they grab these. You then invite them to put them away inside the other box. Okay, so we get rid of those in those. We now have some cards here. You ask them to deal down some cards into a pile on the table. Now as they're dealing, you can actually say to them, you don't have to take them from the top. You can take them from the middle, from the bottom. And so they start to take clumps of cards from different parts of the pack, even from the bottom. It doesn't really matter. And they do out uh, just a few cards. It doesn't have to be that many. The remaining cards are also eliminated into the pack. We now come to a random array of cards which the spectator has chosen. There's no way that anyone could have known what we got here. You then invite them to deal haphazardly onto the table two piles of cards. Now there might be an odd amount, but that doesn't matter. Okay. What we're trying to do here is to arrive, okay, we've got an odd number of cards, but it doesn't matter. Two packets of cards. There's no way Either the spectator or yourself could know what these cards are. Let's take a look. Well, we have a pretty low card there, not going to win you many games of poker, the Four of Spades. And on this one, we have oh, another low one, uh, the Two of Diamonds. Now, this is the deal. You ask a spectator to choose one of those, and this is no magician's force. They can have any one, and the one they touch is the one they're going to keep and use. Make that perfectly clear. So let's say, for example, they choose the, um, I don't know, the two. Okay, so they've chosen the two of diamonds. Just show them that they did have a choice. If they're dealt them differently or chosen different cards when they was randomly picking them out, they could have had any of these. You can eliminate those cards as well. The two of diamonds, an absolute free random choice. You ask the second spectator to tip out the cards from the box they've been holding all the time. And this is your prediction, because you had a premonition earlier on. Turn the cards over and spread the cards face up on them. Now when you do that, you're going to say, I want you to look closely at the faces of all the cards, not the corners. I'm going to show you the whole faces, because when we get to here, can you see there's one card and one card only that's marked? It's my premonition that I had. I marked just one card, this one, which matches yours exactly. There's nothing on the back, just on the face. It matches your chosen card. But go through the rest of the cards to prove that there's no duplicates, no other crosses on there whatsoever. It is an absolute free choice and you have also can spread the backs as well. Okay, so how does this particular performance work? Well, this is a trick that I devised many, many years ago in the early 80s. And it was actually advertised by myself. For those of you who say, oh, other people have done that, you're copying them. I didn't know that anyone else had come up with any idea such as this marking of the cards. If you go back to a copy of this magazine called Abra, this is dated... Um, June 1987 okay and if you look in the back of that you'll see my advert there a company I used to run called High Fashion Magic and it's called Magical Cheat there it is there I've still got the instructions so people may have purchased this back then 
I also featured it on a video that I did several years later in the early 90s, about 92-93. And in there was a trick called Smack and one called Drop. And it used the same principle. And I think I did this on an earlier YouTube video as well. I never knew anyone else had invented it, but I was watching YouTube a couple of months ago and I saw Max Maven done one called uh, Predic Prediction. And I'd never known about that, I'd never seen it before, and it kind of made me dig mine out, uh, and it works exactly the same. Well, I believe it to be. But let's chat, let's go on to how it is, because that's what you're here for. As a magician, you want to know how it works. First of all, as any good trick is, you force two cards. The two cards you're going to force on the spectator is the four and the two, or any other two cards, but they're my force cards. And all you need to do is drop those on top of the pack that you're going to use with the spectator. In the other pack, we'll come to that in a moment, how do I force these? Well, the way that I do this is first of all, too many cards. So the, the spectator can remove the cards. They can spread them. There's nothing untoward about the pack. You get them to cut the cards roughly about half. Now, a bit of magician's force here. You obviously want to use this half because it's got now cards on top. You say to them, grab a packet of cards. Now, if they grab the ones you want them to grab, then that's fine, you then put these into the box. If they grab these ones, straight away pick up the box and say, just push them in there. When they push them in there, we'll get rid of those. And they're left with these. You then get them to deal the cards. Now this is the nice bit. We need to get these two top cards dealt down. So you say, can you deal some cards randomly down here? As they start to deal, once they've gone past the second one, say to them, no, no, uh, randomly, can you take cards from the top, the bottom, the middle, clumps of cards? Because it doesn't matter. The rest of it is all just performance. So they can take cards from anywhere. The important cards are now at the bottom. You then eliminate these back in the box to keep the move consistent. They pick up the cards. You say, can you deal the cards backwards and forwards into two piles. We may have an odd number. That just reiterates that it's totally random. They deal the cards out, and it doesn't matter whether they've got an even or odd amount because you will always end up with those two false cards on the top of each of these. Now this is what makes the trick really powerful because you turn up two apparent random cards, but they do get a choice. Now watch what happens if they choose this, because in the routine they chose that. But say if they chose the other one, um, do stress that the one they pick is the one they will keep and use, just in case there's any magicians in the audience that think you're using Magician's Force. So they choose that one. Again, quickly show the cards that they had a free choice of any cards in there and eliminate those. You then get the other spectator to remove the pack they've been holding on to and spread them face down. Now when they spread them face down, when you go through the pack, you'll see that one card and one card only is marked. And that happens to be the four. So that's how the trick works. For those of you that are ahead of us, all you need to do in a red deck of cards or a different contrasting colour pack, you have two cards that match your two false cards, wherever they are, there. Okay, and you put a cross on the back of one of them. So I've got a cross on the back of the four and a cross on the front of the two. You put these together and you put them in the middle. It may be a good idea to remove the original four and two from the red pack. Okay, the trick's done. You put that in the box, someone holds on to that. If they choose the four, you spread the cards face down because the cross is on the back. But if they choose the two, you tell them to spread the cards face up and it's the only card with a cross on there. It's a fantastic routine uh, and it's a real knockout effect as well. So take your pick of the names, 
drop or smack.